What's the uh, CP? What's the your experience been working with Blaze so far? Um, it's been a lot of headaches. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty. <laughs> Joey stepped inside the baseline, hits a backhand, clean into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> clean into the ground. Full strength. And I said, Randy, great backhand, Jody. <laughs> and I said, bro, that hit the ground before he hit the net. And the man has to go like, so. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Change of the Podcast. It's our second episode for the week. We're in Santiago at the Pan American Games, and we're with the Jamaican Davis Cup team. Um, thank you, Randy, Blaze, and fitness trainer CP for coming on. It's been a long time coming. These guys have been supporting the podcast from the beginning, so thanks for them for finally coming on. I guess we can start by congratulating you guys on your recent successes in Davis Cup and also you, Blaze, on the Pro Tour. Um, can you give us a little bit of breakdown about how your first I guess professional season has gone since you left school yeah well I was in college for four years and I just recently graduated in May so the transition to from the college to pros has been tough at times a lot of a lot of mistakes made especially him getting mad at me but a lot of words but a lot of learning for sure and it's helped me grow as a person and player and uh, yeah, it's, a lot of the success has been to do with me maturing off the court and then also on the court, that helps. And so you feel like you kind of had the level well, even when you were in school, but it was some of the other stuff in between that made you, I guess, your first season on the pro tour, like especially breaking through into the challenges already um, so quickly. You think that that's more about maturity and stuff than actual level of tennis? Yeah, well, I mean, I struggled this season for Tennessee. I didn't have a very good season. I was playing at number three in losing a bunch of matches and then it kind of just in the futures I started winning a lot of matches with you guys over Huntsville and San Diego and we were playing a lot this summer and I kind of just kept building confidence confidence and then yeah you start to believe after a while that okay I have a as good a serve and as good a foreign as basically anyone so why not like yeah and we, we talked a little bit of how you like to play not to give out too much tactics but um, you feel like the, the clay courts here, like slower surfaces, kind of give you more time to, to like get the ball high on players and take take big swings on your forehand. Yeah, it gives you more time. Um, it's kick serve jumps a lot, but these guys are obviously better movers than me on the clay, which is, it gives me a, them an advantage over me. So if I can just improve the movement on it with the help of this guy, then we can. Really good. What's the uh, CP, what's the your experience been working with Blaze so far? Um, it's been a lot of headaches. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty. <laughs> it's been a lot of headaches, but it's also a learning process too. Um, him coming out of college, had to mature a little bit more on the professional level. That where you're in college and everything is laid out on a daily basis for you. From the time you wake up, you got schedule, schedule. Kind of some of the same thing, but you kind of have to be able to want to motivate yourself too because now you don't have a team. It's you and your coaches. And, of course, the coach is going to be a little bit older. So you get a look, we, have, we have a different viewpoint than okay. he does. So when we say 8 o'clock, he might think 8.05. No, it's 8 o'clock. Okay. But it's been good. I think, I think he is, since I've seen you in San Diego, mm -hmm. I think he's have matured a lot and you've gotten a lot better. Okay. So we've seen some signs of, What's your stress level been like? It's still high through the roof every day working I mean, with Blaze? I mean, got a couple of grays. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's honestly, it's kind of worth it too at some point. I mean, with anybody else, you're going to get the level of ups and downs, being a young man, trying to find your way as a professional. And you, never, you were never a professional before. So now that he's learning how to be a professional, it comes with a lot of stress. But sometimes it's a good stress. It's not all bad stress because... The winning kind of cures a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And Blaze has been doing a lot of winning recently. <laughs> um, you spoke about struggling at Tennessee. We have to get into that specifically, but how much does it help having so Coach Mel and then CP on the road with you when he's not available, Mel? How much does it help you having their guidance and what do they give you that helps you to perform at a better rate than you were at Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, so much. These guys... CP's been in this since we were, I was 10 years old. Mm. Mel has been in this since I was 9 years old. So these guys have been with me throughout my whole 
tennis career. So that for them, for me to go through juniors, go through college four years, and then to come out, and I feel like I'm finally ready to play pro, and they still have my back, and they're still working every day like that. That improved my game a lot. What about Randy? There's a team member they're missing that has not said a word for this podcast so far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't been with him since he was dying. We have trained a lot together. <laughs> we a lot of time together. One of the first stories <laughs> I heard about you was like, I think Randy traveled to Europe with you to play. You were playing grade twos or something, or grade ones, I don't know. And you pl- you plugged in your PlayStation into the wall. Electricity went out <laughs> in the whole hotel. <laughs> uh, not even one room. It was two different rooms. Two different rooms, and they come back and they put the lights back on. They have to turn off all the lights, put them back on, and I'm about to say, let me try it again. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too much electricity. <laughs> yeah. I've always struggled with distractions, honestly. Like, back in the juniors, it was Xbox. I couldn't go to a tournament without my Xbox. I didn't, it's never been tennis until now. Recently, it's, I've actually put 100% of my focus in tennis. In college, you have girls, you have partying, they loot you, fall out of love with college tennis, even my last season, you start gambling. I get distracted easily. Right? You start gambling like <laughs> everybody <laughs> starts gambling. Cut that one. This is just what you do, you know? But um, so has Randy been any bit of guidance for you, like in your first? Because when you came to your first couple of years playing, Randy has been already on tour for a few years, right? Yeah, I will say that the most I've improved in my tennis career in a short period of, period of time was COVID. Me, Randy, CP, and Coach Mel trained every day, uh, five days a week for like eight months straight. And we were playing matches. We made sure to play a match like once a week. And after that, Randy went out and he just didn't play much. But whenever he, Randy played after, he had some of the best results of his life. And I went after that. And right after COVID, no, during COVID, I went back to Florida and won like 32 matches in a row and we won the NCA. So I think a lot of it had to do with him and him and Coach Miller. Yeah. Before we go into to your NCAA season, so Randy, um, what's it been like for you, like playing these matches now that you're officially not, not a professional player anymore, but you still come back for matches like Davis Cup and Pan Am games? Because, you know, arguably the level is higher now than it, than it was like when you were playing. I mean, the results speak for itself. You did well at Davis Cup and also almost pulled off a big win this week. Has it been any different playing um, these matches than before when you were actually training every day and stuff? Um, when I'm in the match, it doesn't feel too different because you get into that you know competitive <coughs> mindset and you're just competing, you're just trying to win like every other match. Um, so I don't really view it too differently once I'm in the match but i will say like like they said that covid year was really helpful i actually think even though i had been playing for a lot of years training with blaze actually learned a lot from blaze as well like how he trains and you know having a really really good practice partner um <coughs> it helped sometimes we had at least one that's season. true yeah there's, well, a, there's a period of time where there's some bad practice in there <laughs> like coming to skull hot from the beginning you know practice going much up it's that once or twice but aside from those days I, obviously there's a little less pressure because you know i'm not actively traveling every week and my ranking doesn't matter as much and so if i do lose a match it's not really it's you know less consequence versus where you're fighting for a point you need that point to get your ranking up you know you need to do well, make money that week, all that stuff. Um, but I like to keep fit. I get to train and I, I play all the time still. So I have confidence when I go out on the court. So it, it doesn't feel too different. And then once I start competing, especially if it's going well, it's kind of easy to keep it going. Yeah, I feel like not to break down your game too hard, but like I remember when you were competing, like we go to tournaments, you're trying. I think maybe the problem is a lot of the time you're trying to improve. You know, like while, while you're playing, you want to be improving all the time versus now, I don't know how much you genuinely want to improve. So maybe now you're just focusing on using what you have and competing. And I guess what you're learning is that you have enough to be successful now. You, when you were playing, you had this obsession with your backhand. Like you would always yeah. be... Should I see the double today? Think yeah. when he <laughs> went, <laughs> double today. Double today was not pretty. Time, <laughs> the man is like this, I said, bro, just play but tennis. He, he just flips the racket three yeah. times and he does the, the shadow. <laughs> Yeah, so it's still, it's like, still what's there. Wrong? It's, what's wrong? It, it, it caught me a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> but 
it's, it's overall has been a lot better where i don't really think about it too uh, much you just go out and play but yeah yeah definitely because you want every when you're playing you're thinking look i'm trying to be one of the best players mm-hmm. i want everything to be perfect the best players have to be able to hit everything really well and do mm-hmm. everything well so when it's not or you feel like you're not hitting clean those days used to really bother me like yeah. like if, if i'm not hitting it clean then that's a problem you know then sometimes it just mess me up yeah but like now, like this week when I saw you, I was wa- watching your warm up maybe before, what was it doubles yesterday? I believe. Yeah, yeah. And y'all were hitting the ball clean, like no thinking. You were just like swinging yeah, the ball, right, good yeah. shape over the net every time. Like two years ago, three years ago, it's gonna be so much thought trying to make sure that you can generate that ball every time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what changed too much, but you, like, like you said, even yesterday it was. I, I felt like I was hitting the ball good. I didn't think anything past that. You know, it was just like a casual keep ripping the ball across, like we're getting ready. It was that. That was it. That was the thought process. <laughs> Darian told me that y'all was just cracking serves and cracking forehands and doubles. That's the game style. Like, and even in the, in the singles too, because I think y'all were playing singles at the same time. I had just finished warming up, and Darian said, "Randy and Blaze out there cracking forehands." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what we work on. <laughs> yeah. We just spend hours going for and cross. That's what, that's what Coach Mel teaches. Yeah. High over the net. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Blaze, back to the... Uh, so your season at Florida, the undefeated season, was there any point at the beginning or middle of the season where you thought that maybe you can go the whole way without losing a match? Is, is that, did that cross your mind, or you were just, just taking it one match at a time? Yeah, it was a goal going in, because I knew the, the three guys playing ahead of me and even the two guys playing behind me were were I wasn't going to play much higher because they were seniors. One of them was an NCAA champion. The other one was the other two were all American. So I knew that I was probably in a stalemate at four, and I didn't think I should be losing a match to anyone at number four in the NCAA. So okay. it was my goal from the beginning. And you start about to believe about midway through the SEC season. I started to really believe you were the best player at four. Yes, in the country. And then, is there a specific situation that happened, like when you transferred to Tennessee, that made you lose a bit of confidence, or do you think it was maybe the indoors, like just different scenery, or like you know, you have any idea what it could have been that made you, like, have a tough time at Tennessee in that transition? Yeah, it was a lot. I wasn't I transferred, and I was playing good, and then kind of fell out of love a bit with it for a little time, didn't, wasn't as motivated, I was, wasn't eligible to play that season, and I knew that, like, okay, I'm not even, these points that I'm getting right now, these tournaments I'm playing are worth nothing, because I'm going to be in college next year playing, so I'm going to lose them anyway, so you kind of just, I was just playing, wasn't really enjoying it, wasn't eligible. So you felt it was kind of purposeless, like that transition, yeah. like that time was being purposeless. Yeah, and then it was cold indoors at Tennessee, not for me wasn't enjoying it um, so yeah so then you graduate well not graduated but you finished the season last season and now there's like a sense of relief like after the season done you're back with CP back with Coach Mel a little bit like it's more of a relief now to be back with these people and now the points actually count for where you want to be yeah but I will say I actually improved a lot at Tennessee this season it was in terms of the discipline the the coaches required at that school I lack sometimes and you don't have a choice there. You have to have this. You have to get up at six a.m. and run miles and miles. And I think that kind of makes it tougher in a way. And so yeah, I definitely got better this season at Tennessee. I just couldn't, didn't perform well in the season. But I think a lot of my success now actually has to do with that discipline that I learned from there. And not the discipline CP teaching you. Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 That's funny. All right. Uh, Let's go into, I guess, a little bit about Caribbean tennis. So I, I talked a little bit last night also on a different podcast that it's not that common that we as Caribbean players get to play together that often because like, you were playing South American challengers for a bit this year. I was in Europe on hard court. Obviously, who knows what Darian is doing half the time. But um, these games are always fun for us that we get to be together like we kind of talked about it last night that we wish that the Caribbean played together as one, as one team. Like we kind of haven't. I feel like we'd have a better chance to be successful against the big countries than if we played uh, individual. Do you guys kind of feel that way too, or yeah. is it not that easy for you guys because you've also been successful recently? 
Yeah, I mean, I was telling these guys yesterday also that I've been playing, it gets lonely out there on the challenges and all that, and I was telling them my favorite weeks of this year have been this week, CAC games and the two Davis Cup. Because you're with people that have your back and like you guys and we're all supporting each other. Like even today when I was, I'm a back against the wall and all you guys are going nuts for me, like it motivates you. And you know these guys genuinely want you to win. So yeah. yeah. No, I, I felt the same way. Like I was playing first round here and I don't know how many, 20 people watching maybe but like five of them was you guys like and that's five more than I normally have at tournaments you know it's five more places to look <laughs> yeah. at so it's kind of it's fun to have it's so rough yeah no, it is rough <laughs> it is rough Blaze is right it is lonely and like that's why I kind of wish that we had more weeks like For what sure. you described Davis Cup where we can be together like we always look forward to these games CAC Pan American One games this kind of stuff yeah exactly um yeah so Randy uh what yeah. about you? What's the next step for you, seeing that you're in the retired life? <laughs> I tried to get him out of retirement. No, no, me too. Yeah, no, me no, too. Please no. come to this tournament. I'll, 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 yeah, you can, you can play this and this. Yeah, like, bro. When, I saw him, when I saw you all hit the yesterday. I'm all about the hips hurt and thick. When, <laughs> when I saw you all practicing yesterday, I said, Randy, you sure you don't want to come out and play some doubles? Man, well, it feels good, but... You don't, um, miss, you don't miss traveling and playing? Um... Yes, yes, but I mean, you guys also, I think you guys forget that I'm a little older than you guys, so like, I miss it, but I've been doing it a little bit longer, so mm -hmm. like after a while, you know, especially the longer you are, you know, not making that breakthrough point, it feels even longer, mm -hmm. and so I, the traveling is nice, it's really nice, playing tennis every day is a, a beautiful job, I love it, you know, I can play, I can be on the court for hours, but, um, you know, life goes on, you have to kind of figure out what, go, what goes on after and set yourself up for the future. Um, and so that's what I've been working on recently. But do you feel like you did it the, maybe the wrong way? Yeah. Not, not <laughs> wrong, I wouldn't say wrong. I made some mistakes. No, but I feel like you did it to the best of your ability, but I, f I think that you never actually gave yourself a full chance because what the, rem the Randy that I remember when you were living in Plantation was that you would practice at this country club mm. and practice being like spend hours on the court but it's not actually practice because you're playing like little like half half court doubles tournaments and yeah. these pro amps to try and raise enough money so that you can afford to to pay for gas to drive nine hours not to stay at the worst hotels possible to play these futures you know so it's like yeah. half the time you're trying to make enough money to play that you don't actually spend time preparing for the tournament and then match day comes and you're spinning your racket doing backhand <laughs> shadow <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you're right, you're right. It was always, and you know, that always um, is something that I felt at tournaments. Whenever I played like three weeks of tournaments in a row, my first week was always the worst. And by the second week, I started to play some good tennis. And third week, I was like, all right, now we're playing tennis, you know, because I've been training now for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Good players, properly, just focusing all my energy on just tennis. And so, yeah, it would have been nice. So, I mean, obviously, if I had to go back, I would have done a few things differently. Tried to, you know, raise a little bit more on the front end in terms of capital and, you know, sponsorship money to then just play whatever, 20, 25 yeah. tournaments for the year. Because I don't think I ever had a year where I played that many tournaments. But um, I would have done a few things differently. And, I, yeah, I believe that I could ranked a lot higher than I was ever ranked. I think but everybody believes that. Like Aguilar, yeah. I remember when I was driving with Aguilar and he said, oh, I think Randy's the best player I've ever seen to not break top 1,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never got right. three. Never inside 1,000. Never got three-digit ranking. No, Can but, you believe that? No, As but this man doesn't play people. more than 10 tournaments yeah. a year. <laughs> yeah. like eight tournaments for the year. And he's yeah. yeah. playing his I best. I wouldn't know people. Like three. Well, they're now top 100, but they weren't at the time. So I don't know if that counts that way. We take it. still... <laughs> But like, yeah, I mean, I'm about to go miss, but like, um, yeah, it's just, I know the ranking could have been higher, but could it have been high enough to go, you know, to you top 100 know. or so? That's the thing, you don't know, you never know. So yeah. like, I can't say that I could have gotten that far, yeah. but I know I definitely could have been higher than what I was right. That's what's, that's what's hard for me. Like, it's kind of sad that tennis is that way because you didn't have a chance to actually fulfill your full potential because 
Or maybe you still do have a chance if you come back. If anyone listening Catch wants to sponsor time. Randy. Try it, try it, don't worry. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, you didn't have a chance in previous years to fulfill your full potential because you didn't actually give yourself a full calendar year, a full, not only full calendar year of tournaments, but also full calendar year of actually preparing to play and that sort of stuff. Because like what Blaze and you said, like you've beaten many good players. I don't think anyone is happy to see you in, in the draws, especially if you're outside of the house and you're going to be in qualies. It's like no one's <laughs> liking that draw for them, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually crazy that um, since COVID, that was one of the years where I actually had just time to train, you know? And since then, that year, I feel I improved so much that I've been so comfortable since then, you know, since then I've had consistent, solid results. Not consistent because I don't play consistently, but I feel so confident in my level since that much training because we put in so much work that now I know that I can play at at least a certain level, you know? And so maybe the chance to train more or, you know, but at least I feel like I got you know to that level and it was nice to have a year of just like training and you know fully focusing just on tennis what do you think in your game was the biggest thing that didn't allow you to be successful when i aside <laughs> from spin. aside from the spin in the back end, um the main thing like right now if i was to like make the best tennis version of myself i would get my legs a little bit stronger, they're strong, but like... Brother, what? Late. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. What? I'm telling you, they're strong, but like, late in a third set, that's what that's what matters the most. Yeah, because you played three matches this year. <laughs> yeah, bro, probably. <laughs> but like, and then my, I, I think like, just being able to serve a little bit better, um, serving better and then, yeah, just, just making the back a little bit more solid. Once the back and solid, I can get enough time to get the forehand, and that's the game style. So that's over. what I'm gonna do. <laughs> if I get a few forehands in the rally, I, I feel comfortable. You know, that's all. Do I you do. feel like, because you coach for two? How many years at North? Two Florida? years. Two yeah. years. Do you feel like your time as a coach improved you as a player at all, or do you think mentally, that theory is most not Most certainly, there? most certainly, it helped me improve mentally. Um, even now, you see me on court, like it's a different obviously because i don't have the pressure of playing like if i lose like i'm expected to lose but a lot of things that i'm doing on the courts or during the match you know because i had to work with players and see what was affecting them and you know it makes it a lot easier to to kind of point out okay well this doesn't make sense don't do this you know like someone you know freaking out over little things that may not <laughs> matter that's only going to distract you you know i'm trying to explain this to my players so when I'm playing now, it's it's gonna come as second nature. Like I'm not gonna freak out because I'm, I already know this is not gonna help. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mentally, I feel much more comfortable on the court because you know I'm really just you know taking what I learned from coaching. And Blaze, you've been doing a lot of winning, obviously in the last last few months. And you and I were speaking in South America talking about Mel's coaching staff. We were in South America, we were in Europe, Europe. we were in, we were in Holland. Um, I want to know how much are you focused on winning right now versus improving and how that's affected your results recently? Yeah, I mean, many players that are listening, if you play college tennis, you all probably know that the coach's main focus is for you to win right now, that moment. Mm -hmm. And actually, Brian Shelton, his focus was actually improving. It's, it was never like, oh, I need to win. It's always do the right thing, lose the right way, and kind of takes pressure off you. And I say Mel's own, Mel's coaching style is similar to that, where it's, I don't mind if you lose, if you lose the right way, like, if you lose staying low and hitting through your back, and if you lose doing everything the right way, and obviously competing hard, that comes, that's a given. And if you lose like that, no problem. You're moving in the right direction. And then after a while, you start to truly believe that, that this is the only way. You mm -hmm. don't have a choice. If not, you're not going to make it. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. like, you have to have all the shots like these guys do. You have to trust it. You have to be brave under pressure and mm -hmm. those stuff. And, yeah. I heard today also during your match, CP was also reassuring you a lot of the time, like in some tough moments reminding you to to believe and trust your shots and that sort of stuff how much of 
your recent results has been about reminding yourself to believe in what you worked on and believe in your level and that sort of stuff. Is that something that CP and Coach Mel and you have been working on, I guess, together? Because like, I've, I've overheard briefly when we were in Indiana, we roomed for one night, and I overheard a team meeting, a little bit of you guys talking. So is that something that you guys work on together in, in these team meetings and when you spend time on the court? Yeah, a lot of it has to do with believing, trusting, and under pressure. Well, this is more me, not them. This is me deciding under pressure. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to lose a match on my racket, and I'll be happy with the result regardless. So that stuff definitely not takes pressure off, but lets you, let you be not okay with losing either. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can't understand what you mean because I see today like and like you guys talked about earlier in the Peru episode the, the Peru tournament mm -hmm. how many times did you come back from being down and today it almost happened too we came up from being down sometimes in a big moment it looks like you don't care it looks like you're on the edge of like like you play so free and so loose you like the crowd is screaming the whole stadium is screaming whistling whatever you're tossing the ball to serve like if they're not there it's like your mind is kind of clear. It's like you're going to hit a kick serve and hit the inside in forehand. Like that's what's going to happen, and yeah. you're, you're okay Tactics with, giveaway. huh? <laughs> Tactics giveaway. Tactics. I, well, I think everyone. They're gonna scream all day when they go. To <laughs> <laughs> but they know it. He knew it was happening today. You know, True. it's no surprise. It's not a secret. Yeah. It is not a secret. <laughs> He's on Challenge the Tour now. There's gonna be videos every match he plays. It's not yeah, like. That's true. That's true. And all that's, it's not a surprise. Fine. No, I was kidding. I was gonna say, all you need to do is find Blaze's results. Just go and challenge the TV. You search <laughs> Blaze. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, that's not something that I have to deal with just yet. There's no, not many match film on me. Not that I'm playing many singles matches anymore. No, but a lot of that confidence gained from that. Actually, I always tell the story. I always tell Coach Man and all them. It came from not not from playing up, but from one single shot, the kick side. It was CAC game, I was playing third and fourth playoffs. I must have played like 10 matches in six days, doubles and singles. And it was 9-8 in the tie break to get the bronze medal for Jamaica, which is obviously one of the proudest moments. I love playing for Jamaica. And I told myself, I'm just gonna literally do what I know best. I'm gonna hit the kick serve. 9-8 I'm serving, I'm gonna go kick serve out wide and inside in forehand. And I did that, I hit a winner, clean winner, and then that, I got the feeling of winning from that. And then actually the week after, I went over to 25K in Montreal, and I carried the same mentality over. And That's the week that we were there? Yeah. Okay. And then, sim similar thing, I was down some matches there, and... Kozminov, you know, the Kozminov, Tracy, I was down a set and a break, yeah. and a break in the third. And similar thing, just kind of going for it. I wish I didn't play my best, no, I wish I didn't, but I wish I played like I had my back against the wall all the time. Cause I, that's when I play my best tennis. Yeah, kind of like today. Yeah, exactly. Like today, <laughs> it was six three five two, I believe, or five three, and I remember it crossed my mind that Blaze is about to lose three and three, and it does not feel fair at all that the score is three and three. You know, and I guess it's good justice or good karma. I don't know for you that you were at least able to to come back and fight back and. Speak take it to a third and give yourself a chance in the third because you didn't deserve to lose three and three after yeah. how, how high the level was in that match. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys heard me, but I went over and was, I actually remember the exact score. It was 6 3 4 2 30 on. He was serving. And I said, I don't know. It doesn't feel like I'm, I'm losing, losing this match. match. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I remember I that. said, it doesn't feel like it. I, and he obviously went up 5-2. And then, yeah, I played a tough game to break and then kind of carried momentum. To match just that, match just that. <laughs> <laughs> match just that, six, three, five, four. <laughs> yeah, but the mentality worked though. Like, yeah. I mean, if that's the mentality you had in Peru and all these times, it's not going to work every single time, but you have more of a chance thinking that way than the match soon done. You know? <laughs> 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 no, but it's also <laughs> maturing, playing in matches like this. Obviously, I went out today, extremely nervous, shit in my pants played a horrible first first service game down two love like that and then against a player like this or any player like this a lot of times that would be the set so no matter how hard you try to bring it back you're down six three you're down a set and then the, obviously the second set was back and forth so, but, yeah. what do you feel like you learned the most um if you've had time to reflect because obviously you had singles not too long of a break then doubles and then you came here ate dinner and now we're doing this so i don't know if you've had that much time to reflect yet but 
do you feel, what do you feel like you've learned the most from from this match today um more reassurance that i'm right there with these guys and close to breakthrough obviously i've i've lost some matches like this to guys top 150 recently i lost to tarante 7-6 in the third i lost to dino prison which is like six in the third but it's it's annoying because I wanted to get over the finish line with one of these and I know that once that happens, the confidence will carry over and it will happen consistently. But it's the match itself was kind of a roller coaster, but a lot to learn and positives to take for sure. That's hype. What do you, um, what do you think Jamaica looks like, the next generation coming up in Jamaica, if you've seen um, any of the tennis players there, or in the Caribbean as a whole really? I mean, I hope that we, as a group, can inspire the younger generation in the Caribbean. But, yeah. I think one of the issues is what it takes to become good from the Caribbean, at least up to this point, is leaving home early. So when I was starting when I was six, seven, eight, I think I left home when I was 12. So from six or seven till I was about 12, I had all the best payment tennis players living in the Bahamas. And every day of the week, we would go to the NTC and we would train all after school until the lights came on. And then on, on Saturday morning, we would train from, we get there at eight o'clock in the morning and we would be there all day, like playing games, playing sets, hitting with everybody. But when I turned 12, I left. Christian Cargill left. Triage left. Everybody left. So Fresh they, Rashid left, so KJ even left, so everybody who had a chance to do something good in, let's say, the ITF junior level wasn't home. So those other six-year-old kids who I, that, that I was at the time didn't have me to look up to, really. Like, they saw me on newspaper or whatever results, or if I came home to play a tournament here or there, but they didn't have me as an example. So I think it's hard. I don't know what it looks like in the Bahamas now, in terms of players coming up, I think that's main a big part of it is that the the kids don't really have a real example of what to do every day to get better. That's why it's so hype for Jamaica that they get to play Davis Cup matches at home. Mm. So that like, helps a lot. I, I don't know how much time you guys get to actually spend with the younger generation, but they actually get to come out and watch you play and see you and like that sort of stuff. Do you see a lot of players there or not really? Like the younger kids? Do we see a lot of the younger kids? Yeah, like, do they come out to the matches, but like. I haven't seen them play any tennis or it's not like we yeah. do like a little I think maybe this time we might do like a little kids day or something where we hit with them a little bit. It's also different. Do something like, for the kids. Want... Stop be so bad minded. Do yeah. something. How it's much also different. Longer telling you? Yeah. It's different like also like a kids day and me being eleven and asking at the time, let's say Jason Roll who was seventeen, eighteen, let's play a set. And he would play me in a set, you know? Yeah. And I would feel like I'm trying to beat this man and then I you know, it's like motivating. If you come out and it's just like a little kid's day and it's fun, sure. it's, it's like, a, I don't know. It gives you something to look forward to, but you don't... You don't gain too much from You know it. what I mean? It'd be better if they saw us training or got to like, maybe just like... But quick like question about day. that. How many people, you, how many camps do you have in your country? I mean, I, I, when I go home, I do something. You no, know, no, but I mean like, I'm like in a different... Academy. Academy, so because in Jamaica, I think the issue is that we have so many academies, like... I think when Blaze and Randy was younger, mm -hmm. you find out that most of the kids in Kingston would probably be all in the same place. Yeah. Now it's like water, water down, not in a bad way, but water down where the kids are spread out and all over the and island. They don't even train with each other anymore. Exactly. So, so when, when I was coming up, it was all, let's say, 30 of us at the same time in the same place, mixing and competing with each other. It was a lot of rivalries. Yeah. And now it's like a little academy over here. Coaches here, and it, so it's, that was the same when Ryan and him was. You come, come to Ligue in the club, well, yeah, it'd be had, everybody at Ligue in the club from from after school till mm -hmm. they had lights. So kids was there all day yeah, playing. But now you got so many different coaches that's pulling the kids apart. Yeah. And the coaches not thinking about the development of the kids. They're thinking about my camp is better than your camp. And if if Jay's hosting a tournament, I'm not gonna go to Jay's tournament because I don't like Jay. Or yeah. So it's not helping the, the kids to grow. I agree. We don't have that problem. Antigua only has like two, three hotels <laughs> <laughs> that have tennis programs. And I, I, even the program that I grew up in is gone. It's done now. The hotel, 
they're using the tennis courts for storage or some shit. So they but, don't even. <laughs> but no, nah, there's, there's playing tennis and then there's. I don't think people understand the sacrifices that we've all had to make to reach the level of tennis that we have. Mm. Um, obviously, the kids really look up to them, but tennis is an expensive sport for sure. And obviously, in the Caribbean, not a lot of the majority of the population is not that well off, but it also takes like. What age did you move home? Pardon me? What age did you move away for tennis? I gra- I graduated CXC at 16. So I was like 16 or 17. So moved I, moved, I moved I right moved late. Like yeah. I, moved, I was I think old. I think yeah, I, I moved I was, was pushing 13, 12, 13. 14, yeah. I think I missed my chance like in not missed my chance but like my fifth form year I was playing tennis once a week cuz I yeah. was I had to do 10 CXC subjects. I would only get to play tennis on a Friday, maybe a Saturday. I would wow. play tennis once or twice a week. So then by the time I turned 16 and went to the U.S., I was already missing so many years of, of yeah. uh, training and also tournaments. I think before my first year in college, I played less than 20 matches, like singles matches in my whole life, okay. which is... That's yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. Matches. Yeah. <laughs> I'm think, moving like it's Randy. It's a miracle you're this good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving like you could have been Roger Federer, but <laughs> yeah, man, my, how did he make it here? <laughs> my junior career is like Randy's pro career. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's overachieving right now. <laughs> nah, that's true. But one thing too, I think the parents need to understand also that like how much kids have to train in order to be good like a lot of parents their kids are playing like once twice a week like you said and you can't really expect them to be that good if they're not actually putting the time especially in. if the quality isn't yeah what it needs to be you know yeah. I mean, you can train a little bit less if your quality is amazing but yeah. if you have not the best coaching and not good competition you just you can't get there especially mm. the way sports is moving now it's like now it's all about maximizing as much time as possible so mm. like as recovery gets better, it just means you can spend even more time playing and more time improving. So At a higher quality, while yeah. while other kids are playing more than they were ten years ago, you're playing less in those crucial developmental years. And then you go to college, you don't have a backhand like me. So <laughs> <laughs> still trying to find it. <laughs> yes. One night the drama yesterday. <laughs> Why you don't tell them? Tell the story. <laughs> me and Randy were walking over to practice today. Um, Jody Today, Scrum, yesterday, 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 and Jody's skull must have been hot. I don't know why. And it was <laughs> early in the morning, cold, gloomy in Santiago. And <laughs> Jody, walking Jody. by, <laughs> Jody hits a first serve. The guy hits a return outside of Doubles Alley. Jody steps inside the baseline, hits a backhand clean into the ground before he hits <laughs> <laughs> Clean into the ground. She just said, Randy, great backhand, Jody. <laughs> And I said, bro, that hit the ground before I hit the net. And the man has to go like, so. <laughs> oh. I was for my life, bro. Like, I, I, I got up. No, I Don't was. Don't wait to start your Wednesday morning. <laughs> yeah. I played the first game, got broken. Played the second game, he held. I look at Evan and, and uh, Omni, and I go, bro, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> <laughs> so, me being a trainer in the group, yeah. to all you guys, what's next? And where do you see yourself in the next year going into the Olympics and even after the Olympics. You can start here, I talk a lot. You can go with Justin first. What's next? Like immediately after here or yeah, just? just yeah, just because I mean, you know, this is, this is behind us right now, so we're moving forward. Um, so I plan to leave tomorrow night to play a challenger in Guayaquil, Ecuador, and then try to get into one in Lima as well. And then there's a 15K in Boca where I live. Uh, I'm going to try to play that as well. And maybe sneak the ones at the end of the year with, with Blaze, the Brasilia, and Temuco. Those are the hard court ones. Yeah. I think I'll go there too. So. And I'll take a couple outfits. Yeah. Wasn't high. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, my goal from four years ago was to qualify for the Olympics next year. And due to, I mean, I had a lot of injuries the last few years, so I'm... I'm behind on that goal, but I still want to make that happen. And I think I would have to, if I didn't get to the medal rounds here, I would have to probably either be ranked extremely high inside the top 100 or so, or maybe if I'm the highest ranked player from the region, you have a chance to get a, a wild card. So that's, that's what I want to do in the next year. 
find a way to get my level up to there. Chase down Blaze and Darian and <laughs> Nick Hart and those boys. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to doing in the next year. And just staying healthy. Um, so I feel like I do it. That's been good for you the last, what, two months, three months? Yeah, I've been healthy the last four months. So, four months, that's good. So Lord, when we stay that way. But um, yeah, feel good. That's what I'm looking forward to. Randy can't talk because he's retired. Week. All right, let's see. Um, <laughs> I think maybe there's a challenger coming up in... Uh, what are you talking about? Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to get ready for ATP finals coming up. You want <laughs> <laughs> I looked at a 250 schedule. Uh, now, nah, for me, it's different. It's a little different. Um, but still, a lot of tennis is going to be involved because we have the Davis Cup in the end of January and... We're playing at home. I'm always, you know, preparing to be my best at Davis Cup. We, uh, I'm an essential member of the team, so I'm gonna be training hard. Um, whenever Blaze is, you know, finished with his season fully, he comes back to Jamaica. We're gonna get after it. So I'll be in Jamaica, um, uh, and I'll keep up. You know, I'll be training hard. Sure, training Anna's happy about that. Spending time with my Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Shout me. out Anna, my baby. I love you. <laughs> Shamelessly in love with my dog. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll be spending time with her. Um, you know, setting things up down there to 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 live and and become a more normal member of society. But before, for the short term, I'm definitely gonna be training hard. Before we move on to Blaze's part, but do you is that something that you miss like this this phase of your life? Because you and I are more similar to age, and I definitely like look forward to that part of my life like settling down living in one place not having to travel all the time getting a dog like oh little stupid oh. things like that you know? yeah like, yeah no so like on the back end of things like it's it's wonderful like it's it's so much it's so much more relaxed it's structured like I, even the last you know maybe two weeks i, I just because i just just moved back to jamaica even the last two weeks you know playing football twice a week you know <laughs> having the weekend off to kind of do whatever you can go to the beach and stuff. Um, you know, things are a bit more stable and normal during the week. It's very nice. I mean, I obviously, you you know, there's glamour in the, the professional lifestyle and everything, but there's also, I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I get to spend every day I see Anna. <laughs> I like, I mean, but it's nice, you know, she comes Trying to, trying to earn points on this podcast. Up, yeah. I don't have to. She comes up, she <laughs> points up there. <laughs> she, uh, no, it's nice. You know, you spend time, you see your family a little bit more often. You know, it's, it's, it's much more chill. Yo, didn't you give but Anna's family COVID? Is that how that works? Did not, excuse me, do yo, don't, 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 because somebody <laughs> what was the story like? No, you did I do house? what? Weren't you in the no, house with them and there no, was a COVID no, no. outbreak? What was that about? No, 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 no. no. All right. We'll get it correct if you guys say something like that. <laughs> but no, it was a week before. It's Brennan. It's Brennan Bird that Basso gave me COVID. <laughs> so I went beach. This is like a couple days before Christmas. I home. went home for Christmas. A <laughs> couple days before Christmas, Brennan said, yo, beach. Done deal. Going on a boat, going to the beach. Are you a child? <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't say no. What? You Why would I say no? It was beach mom. So you're stuck no, to this no, beach no, mom. But we're, no, but we're going to the beach. That's safe. We're away from people. It's not like uh, we're going. Is that? Is we're going to a key? So like, okay. Like a so tiny to island. Social distance. For the, for the followers, you know, it's like a small island where you take a boat out and you know, you're that's that's distance. So, Brandon. We go there, whatever, and then on the way in, you know, one little cough and thing, and say, yo, I feel kind of sniffly. And say, okay, whatever, you know. Next morning, the man tell me, say, actually, I went with him to do his COVID test. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to stop and do the COVID test. <laughs> on the way home, the man said, yeah, I'm just going to stop and do the COVID test, you know, just to be safe. Boom. I went with him, sat in the car beside him and everything, did the COVID test, whatever. Next day, he got the results. He said, brother, my COVID test is positive. <laughs> so, right. so now it's, Literally like two days before Christmas, so I did one. Mine came back positive on Christmas Eve, so then I had to spend the whole of Christmas into New Year's. He gave me quarantine, COVID. so I did Can not give anybody. I didn't give anyone. The only thing is when I came out of quarantine, then coincidentally Anna got COVID. I don't know. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? She got it after, but no one else in her, her family didn't get it. 
This one was worse. Like, this, to her. Exactly. So, uh, because he like, starts feeling sick, like, what was it, like, December 19th. 19th. He has to go home on when? The 22nd? My flight is the 23rd. I'm in Boca. And then I start feeling sick 19th. My flight is Negative 24th. until the 21st. Then I test positive 21st. Then maybe 22nd or something, you start feeling sick. But then by the 23rd, I he go negative, negative. So I can go home for Christmas and he was stuck by himself. And I test positive. <laughs> and you went home. And I stayed in Florida. <laughs> I stayed, oh I stayed in Florida by myself in That's the pandemic for, Chris, for Christmas and New Year's. That's tough. At least I was at home. That's tough. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and this one gone left you. That's I'm out. I just want me there. Go ahead. All right, all right. Okay. Blaze, back to the question. Back to CB's question. Your turn. Where you see yourself in the next, what was it, next couple of years? Next year. Well, next short year. term, long term. Yeah. One year. All right, well, I'm, I'm, our goal, I've definitely, well, actually, when I was starting my pro career this summer, I set out my goal for, for the end of the year to be top 500. And, of course, I've, I've done that. Um, I have, I'm at 420 now. I have no points to defend until June next year. So, <coughs> definitely a goal of mine is, is Roland Garros and Wimbledon next year. Um, we're going to push hard for those. Um, well, I didn't, long term within the next year and a half, two years to be inside the top 100. I definitely have the level, it's just consistently doing it and being disciplined consistently. Of course, when you go back to Jamaica, you, you get distracted sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's much, it's a good life in Jamaica, as Randy was saying, but that can also be a distraction. So what I've done well this year is limited my time there, not spending more than two weeks at a time in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> so, limited time in school, limited time in Jamaica. So. <laughs> well, I'm actually doing my master's online, so I'm still in school, technically. Okay, okay. And you? Me, yeah. uh, since I switched my priorities, I guess, in my, in my tennis, like to focus on doubles in the last, it's been about two months now, two and a half months, I've been very successful. And my, not that I didn't have belief before, because I did, I just felt like, I never actually trained my doubles. Like I was always relatively successful. Like a couple of years ago, I was 500 in the world. And I, like I said, I never actually trained doubles. But now my belief has gone up that I have these areas of, of my doubles that I can improve a lot. And I already have improved a lot. Um, so yeah, definitely I believe I can be top 100 in the world. Um, I don't know how soon that would be. I try not to think too much about that. But then, like I said, I've been successful recently the last my last three tournaments was two wins and a final, two 25s and a 15. So, and I only have 20 points to defend for the rest of the year. So hopefully I can finish the year strong and I think I have maybe six, seven, eight tournaments left. Hopefully I can be in the challenges by the end of the year. If I can get inside the 300s, 200s and play a full challenger schedule next year, I think that's when you really start to move. If you, if you can play a full challenger schedule now, every win is more rewarding. If you make deep runs, it's more rewarding. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to set like strict ranking goals, but I feel like once I break into the challenges and I have deep runs there, then see how my career goes. That's how I feel uh, for the next next year, next two years. Yeah, but you guys have a great group of friends. How come you guys don't come together more often and train together? Like I know we've been flirting with the idea of doing a camp mm -hmm. in Jamaica in December. Yeah, I've been begging. I, I, I think. Lord. I think. I mean, I know me. me <laughs> I mean, Coach Mel is kind of excited because he's like, CP, you plan the camp in Jamaica? You mm -hmm. don't tell me about it? Mm -hmm. But I'm just, I was just flirting with the ideas because I think you guys have great camaraderie and I think this will put you guys in a good start to start off January and February. Sure. You do a four, two, three camps in Jamaica. Oh, but Barbados, wherever we could go to train. The issue with that is, um, I think Justin made that point a few weeks ago on a different podcast, is that we don't live at home either. So the, the small chances that we get to spend time away from our, like where we train in, te in, in Florida, we would like to spend it at home with our family as well. So like the last time I was home was in February for four days. Before that was just Christmas for like two weeks. So now this off season, I would like to spend at least two, three weeks at home with my family. So that's the biggest challenge I feel. And then in terms of scheduling, like it's just, it's challenging because 
we are all good friends, but at the end of the day, we're going to put our career first. So, for example, Blaze is not going to come and play indoor hard when he thinks he can play South American clay. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't want him to do that for me, just like he wouldn't want me to come and play South America clay. You know what I mean? No, I so get that part of it. I think it's challenging. But then, I, with that being said, I also feel like once we get all get to similar rankings and we're playing similar level tournaments consistently, then there's less options. So then we will be playing, hopefully, the big tournaments together, at least, you know, and that we'll spend more weeks together. And then also, now that Blaze is out of school, I'm sure we'll spend more weeks together, like having little weeks here and there. Nice. And yeah, exactly, that sort of stuff. But it's definitely, preseason training is definitely something I've tried to do, like the last two, three years. It's just, like I said, no one's gonna, like Darren's not leaving Barbados to come to Antigua for a week during Christmas. And Justin has to spend time with his family. I'm assuming Blaze as well, Randy too. So that's, that's what makes it challenging about that time of the year. But for sure, I think it can happen in the middle of the season, so. I think, but honestly, for, I think for next year, I would like to probably play more weeks that you play as well. I think we have similar game stats, yeah. like similar surfaces, and get along well with CP and with Mel. And Mel has been nice enough whenever I'm on the tour or the, even here watching my matches and, and we talk through everything. And he's been helpful to me as well on the road. So I would definitely like to kind of see how where tournaments can align in the future. And even play a little doubles in, in Holland. Yeah. Working on his backhand return. Uh, <laughs> I told him before I said, yeah. I said, yo, I'm going to play this and I'm, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> we play one match, we <laughs> kill some guys three or two and he, he <laughs> pull out of it. I think quickly before we move on, we should just say, I just want to say how much I appreciate Coach Mel. Like He's never been my specific coach or anything and I've never actually worked full sessions with him. But every time he's seen me, he's been very good to me. Especially this week, like me not having a coach here. The first day, he was making sure that I knew the bus schedule, making sure that we, you know, we had practice course, yeah. that sort of stuff. If, if I had any questions, I was asking Coach Mel. So I just wanted to say, Mel, if you're watching, we appreciate you. And hopefully, um, by the time this episode comes out, everyone with the family back home is healthy now and feeling better. So, um, so yeah, yeah, thank you and, for that. And big up CP, too. Yeah, he yeah. always <laughs> always bring in energy. On the, on the side, <laughs> sure. the I grace. wanted to ask, ask you. Yo, CP needs to sit with a bag the of grace. ice on his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> skull, skull <laughs> hot. Cool him off. Yeah. I know you big into track and, and American football. So what's it like for you be on the sideline at a, t at a tennis tournament and all the tennis etiquette and have to be proper and this and that, even though you don't really <laughs> conform to that? To that standard, like, what, what was so the phrase? What, what was the what, how do you tennis players? <laughs> so, I don't know if you remember, it was the first, my first tournament was Davis Cup. Oh, when I played Blaze, when you played okay. Blaze, yeah. and like the first, the first couple of days, I was just talking, doing the match. Ref was looking at me, I'm like, what? <laughs> Randy or Blaze, like, you can't do that. I'm like, why? It's, not, it's, it's tennis. I'm like, but. Why can't I talk? Gotta be quiet. I'm like, be quiet. But I have learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's still learning. Way. It's coming a long way. It's a long way. It's a long way. I tell Coach Mel, like, I'm still not mature enough yet uh -huh. to handle some of this tennis stuff because yeah. I mean, it's like, the, even the fans. I, I remember, I think it was we played on um, Panama. Was it Panama we playing? And the guy was talking trash to Blaze, being rude. And I just stood up in the bleachers. I'm like, if you say it again, I'm going to throw you in the middle of the court. <laughs> and and, and the, the ref looked back and looked at me. He's like, did he yeah. just say what he said? <laughs> and I said, the ref didn't even speak English. I said, hey, tell him, don't say it again. Mm -hmm. If he say it again, he's going to be sitting next to you. Today, Blaze on the other side of the court. See, he goes, go Blaze, go Blaze. The whole crowd goes, shh. He goes, shh, you shh, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, it's, it's a different. I mean, you know, being, being a, growing up in America where all our sports are so aggressive, the mm -hmm. fans are aggressive. I mean, like even in high school where we probably were on the best team in, in the country at the time. You got a thousand kids showing up. We leave town. We have a whole Calvary drive behind the bus and the crowd just go crazy. Mm -hmm. So here you got that. It's a control mm -hmm. environment when you get to go crazy. When you don't get to go crazy. Yeah. So it's been good. I love it and I don't love it. Because okay. it's point when you gotta shut up and you kinda like, my God, I gotta go. 
<laughs> or you throwing, throwing a fumble onto the court. <laughs> no, but I mean, I've, I've loved tennis for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'll term term with tennis. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how I got into tennis. I don't That's know. No. I mean, I just remember one day I'm sitting at football hey, practice. Was and the, oh, so yeah. I was sitting at football practice and his dad comes to me and he's like, hey, you know anything about tennis? I said, yeah, you hit the ball across the little thing. He's like, my yeah, nephew's one of the best tennis that. players. He, he <laughs> needs a, a coach to train him. I'm like, I don't know about tennis. He said, no, nah, I just need it. So I'm going to do strength training and mm -hmm. running. And I'm like, cool, I could do that. Mm -hmm. And I started with his cousin. And it took off from there. Then when I think Blaze got hurt and came back to Jamaica, and I helped him with his rehab, and then it just went from there. And funny story, I think Blaze was like 10 at the time. I'm sitting in the gym, we have a 10 o'clock appointment. He walks in like 10.05, and he got a bird in his hand. I'm like, where you get a bird from? I just killed it. He put the bird in the plastic bag, Psychopath. put the bird in the corner. Work, work, work. He worked out. Jay, 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 he worked out. He worked out. Put the bird in the corner, worked out. I didn't work out. Took the bird home and cooked the bird. Yeah, what happened was the bird was chilling up on the tree and the bird was way too comfortable. <laughs> and and my family hunts birds. So like, Okay, um, six weeks out of the year, it's a big, it's a thing in Jamaica. You go That's true. Hunting. My first night staying in his house, I ate pigeon. Right. So. Fuck. <laughs> so there was a bird that was waiting to come with them. I just picked up a rock stone and I threw it and I hit the bird. Sharp shoot up. Yeah. One time. <laughs> Precision. And I went and picked up the bird, and then I showed CP. Look, I got this bird. Sniper. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, See, he was like, what am I getting myself into? I was walking to fitness with a bird. Nah, but it's, I've had a, some funny stories about Blaze. So one day we went to the park to run, and it was hot. It had to be about 100 degrees. And he got so mad, he cussed me out. He's like, I ain't never coming back. I'm going to go train with uncle somebody. I'm like, man, bring your punk ass and train with him then. <laughs> about 5 o'clock, my phone rang. Coach CP, what time training tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, the, the, the good thing, like I said, I mean, I, I've enjoyed all you guys I've had. The funny part about it, I've trained just about all the Davis Cup players. Mm -hmm. John Chin used to come to me when he was like eight years old at 5 a.m. in the morning. One Chin. One Chin. Big one Chin. You know, I've trained Brandon Burke. You uh -huh. know, when Brandon was traveling with, with DK, I was training him. So I've, I've been blessed to have been around some good athletes in mm -hmm. Jamaica. You know, and I've gotten good results seeing them. Because I think the second time, no, the first time they got the group two, I think I was the trainer. Mm -hmm. I just didn't travel with the team. Okay. And then when they made it back again, I was the trainer. So it's been a good experience. Mm -hmm. So when I was beating up on Randy in group three, that's you weren't there. No, I wasn't there. You wasn't a part of that one. one. Nah. I, don't know. I, don't, I don't know that was. <laughs> you know, I'm undefeated against Randy tough Davis Cup. Undefeated. And futures, actually. That's before COVID. That's yeah, before that's COVID. COVID. I've yeah. never played him after Post COVID. Post-COVID really dangerous. <laughs> I've never played him after COVID. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of last year, we had the, the exhibition thing in uh, the King Alarm Cup. Um, <laughs> we had a good time. It was, it was fun. And moving on. <laughs> um, I don't know if something will be possible again in the near future, but I feel like that's also good for Caribbean tennis, for, the, for people just to see us play the best players in the Caribbean. To come and travel and yeah. and play. So um, whether it's that or maybe we do a training camp somewhere, maybe a tournament. Yeah, yeah, we'll be. We need to get more weeks like these, and hopefully in our countries where yeah, other people sure. can be involved, and we can do little camps yeah. with players and play with other for sure. Caribbean players, yeah. and also just spend time at home and and prepare. That'll be fun. More more weeks like these are needed. I feel I feel like. Yeah, yeah. They, they said they're trying to get some features in Jamaica. I don't know. Yo, if I got a call. It was supposed to be like 20 in a row, right? I yeah, that's what I got said. a call. I got a call from, I don't know who it was in Tennis Jamaica, called my Well, it was our president. <laughs> our president <laughs> called me and said, hold on, Jody, I have someone to talk to you. Handed the phone. And the person was like, hey, Jody, we have some futures coming up. I know you're close with Blaze and Randy. Just let me know if you need anything, like wild cards or anything. Like, we'll, we'll help you out, blah, blah, blah. You know what no, I can't remember. Yeah. That was well. That's good. That's positive. Yeah. That was in the summer. I hope they have the futures in Jamaica. Macy Randy come out every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yo, <laughs> I did not want to see Randy in the draw this week, to be honest. I did not want to see. Honestly, I didn't want to see anybody, any of the. Yeah, I didn't want to see any Caribbean players yeah. either. We all post Spanish speakers. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Only Blaze made it out the first round. Well, it's all good. Yeah. We'll be better well, next time. Well, I got a bye. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Which means I did the worst. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Anyway, anything else we need to cover before we roll? This oh, was man. fun. All good? People. Oh, we have five people actually bought Pro Strings already. So if, if you're watching, if you want the five, thank you. Hope you... Hope you're enjoying it or it's being useful for you. If you haven't, use the code CHANGEOVER in the shop. Get the pro stringer. $100 off. $100 off. Um, CP, Blaze, Randy, thank you for coming on. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, domino time. Yeah, time for some dominoes. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> See you guys in the next one.